I'm, I'm being real. Isn't that what they said? Isn't that what the world said? I mean, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the world. The world said, how are they going to help me? What you going to do for me? How are you up there talking about what I should be and shouldn't be doing and all of that and who I should be sleeping with and who I, and what I should be smoking and all of that? And you all can't even judge the trivial matters that affect you. How are you going to tell me what to do? We must be concerned about our witness to the world. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Some people were concerned. Reverend PV and others, they were talking to me and they were praying for me when I wasn't opening the doors of the church. The Lord had just told me to just be quiet for a minute. And I wasn't opening the doors of the church. People were saying, oh, but, but. People won't get saved and people will, people, how will people know to come? But the truth is, our witness to the world is being tarnished every day when we go out into the world and when we talk ugly and when we act mean and when we act nasty. Every day that you live is our witness to the world. We are the book that the world reads. How will they know how to be Christian except to look at me? Except to look at you? You say, I'm a member of Omega Baptist Church and my pastor went to Colgate Rochester Divinity School and so on and so forth. But if your behavior is not changed, why should anybody listen to you? I'm talking about, I mean, what good is our witness if our behavior can be so ugly? And then you got to ask yourself, what do I do about stuff that happens in church? How do I act? How do I talk? I'm serious. How do you act when stuff jumps off at church? It's got to be in love. But if you act differently, judge yourself. Ask yourself, well, what have I said in the last few days? And what was it based on? What was it based on? I'm serious. Because I stand as your pastor. And I love everybody here. And I try and treat everybody right. And I try and do justice as God leads me. And then when I have to do something that somebody doesn't like, and then you're going to jump bad with me? No. But what's my response? Should I take you to court? Should I kick you out to church? Should I create malady? Should I create mess? No, I have to take it to the Lord. But in the interim, how we should behave <laughs> is that we should trust the Lord to deal with things that we do not understand. If you don't get it, take it to the Lord. I, I, I read, and I'm almost done. I really am. Almost. I told you, my wife preached this thing. In verse 7 and 8, it's, and why should you take it to the Lord? Because verse 7 and 8 says, Why not let yourselves be cheated? Instead, you yourselves are the ones who do wrong and cheat even your fellow believers. I love the message translation says, all you're doing is providing the fuel for more wrong, more injustice, bringing more hurt uh, to the people in your, of your own spiritual family. And the truth is, 
And this is what I believe, and I believe it, I'll take it to the grave, is that in Romans chapter 8, verse 28 is my favorite scripture. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And when I do not understand something, I shut up and talk to the Lord about it. But if you're running your mouth, running the pastor down, running the church leadership down, you're wrong. I'm telling you, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I don't play that. When I was a church member, I didn't run the pastor down, and I don't like when other people try and stand up against godly authority when you're trying to be godly. In John chapter 14, it says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't get all confused. Don't get frustrated. Don't get distracted. Don't get all turned up in turmoil. See, that's when I know your spiritual maturity. How do you act when trouble comes your way? Do you go and pray? Do you give the Lord the time to show you the sense in what he's leading? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. This is Jesus talking. That, that, that's what you ought to do. It says trust in God and trust in Jesus. What you doing, Reverend? Am I talking loud? Am I acting bad? Am I trying to show the world how bad I am and how big and how bold I am? Am I trying to talk stuff? Am I trying to talk junk? What am I doing? I'm trusting in God and I'm trusting in Jesus. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? That's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I've got room in my father's house for you. I made preparations for everybody. I love this world. I love my children. And I love you. But do you love me enough? Sometimes how you tell God that you love him is to keep your mouth shut and sit down and follow the Lord. I'm talking real today. I'm talking to everybody in here. I'm not playing with anybody. If you love the Lord, if you love God, don't cause confusion in God's church. You need to shut up and trust in God. And if God leads you, go someplace else. We've had plenty of people leave and go someplace else. But if you trust God, don't cause confusion in God's church. Don't cause disharmony in God's church. This is God's property. I said, this is God's property. God chastises me when I mess up. He doesn't tell you about it, but God whoops my butt sometimes. God does not play with me, and I'm not playing with you. Do not cause disharmony. We don't, don't, don't nobody go out of here thinking that there's any big problem in the church. But God leads me to deal with stuff when it's when it's, you know how when, when you boil in something and the pot begins to gurgle and the pot begins, ain't nothing boiled over yet. But I love God. And I know all of us do too. I'm serious about that. But it's my job to tell you when you're going astray. It's my responsibility to tell you when you're going astray. And so, and you know what? <laughs> my wife and I were laughing that before there was any controversy 
my wife and I had chosen this scripture. But that's how God works. That's how God works. And I asked God, so God, why this scripture? But the Lord made it clear that God wants a church that operates decently and in order. And the order is God first. <laughs> 